We're Luca and Giulia, and this is our adventure. In this episode, we reach the Atlantic Ocean, explore some of Morocco's iconic cities on the coast, taste some delicious local food, and discover more about this country's fascinating culture. Watch to see more. Hello! In the last episode, we left you as we were trying to get out of the desert. We lost the track multiple times, especially because it was windy, so the sand would quickly cover our own tracks. And we only made it out of the desert in the middle of the night, thanks to our GPS, where we just followed a straight line as much as possible towards the point where we started. It was fun, but also stressful, and we were exhausted when we made it back to camp. But we did! Yeah, now fast forward a few hours on the next day. Quick update! Hello! This morning we woke up in the sand dunes with a lot of sun and wind and dust. <laughs> and then we drove through the mountains, we're driving westwards. We're trying to make it to Agadir, or like in the neighboring area. And it looks like to get there, you have to go through an Iceland-like type of landscape. We're, we're driving in the rain. Yes, in Morocco, which is pretty incredible, to be honest. Um, you cannot really see, what, 1,500 meters ahead? Maybe 100. Yeah. We just had five degrees Celsius outside. Yeah. It's pretty cold. Yeah. Who would have thought? I mean, the cold, maybe, but this fog and like just being in the cloud and it's raining, it's a pretty unique experience, I'd say, if you travel to Morocco. We were not expecting it for sure. And it's nice to be back in some more greenish landscape. I think I read uh, many of the trees around us are Arga trees. Yes. And now we're ready to go to the sea. I'm excited about that. Hopefully the weather will clear up a bit. But yeah, we'll show you. Coffee inside today because it's raining. And it's really pretty before. I mean, it's still very pretty. But it's getting colder and windier. It is normally windy here. Look at that tree. How crazy is that? Literally wind blown. <laughs> um, and yeah, now it's, it's there's a few drops uh, in this very quiet place. So we'll move soon for first coffee. Rain down in Africa. <laughs> it's raining. Uh, it's awesome. We get the full spectrum. Totally. So. Uh, we're all sitting in our cars having breakfast. <laughs> I mean, having breakfast, just drinking our coffee. Yeah. Because there's not it's much really more. Good we can do. Yeah, that's nice. We waited out the rain a little bit in our cars and then we set off. Ah! Take the second exit. What just happened? So, we took a roundabout on the wrong, in the wrong way. I mean, look at the truck there. There's cars driving in every direction into the roundabout. Look at this. <laughs> Hello! Hello! <laughs> Amazing! <Love it. laughs> we didn't have a lot of time. We needed to get all the way up north to Tanger, and our plan was to drive along the coast. The sky started clearing up. It turned to be a very sunny day. We made it to Essaouira, which was the first town on our way. We liked Essaouira, didn't mm -hmm. we? Essaouira was really free. I mean, it was nice atmosphere. Yeah, very chill. Lots of surfers, lot of, lots of tourists too, but a very relaxed type of tourism. And don't forget, it was Ramadan time. And, uh, all the previous places we've been, we rarely found any people, any shops open, anything. So we had, sadly, very, very little interactions also with locals. And in, uh, in Esawira it was different. We found more people, more shops and restaurants open, of course, for the tourists. Locals would still uh, pass during the day, but yeah, it was nicer that you could interact with more people. And we had some pretty good food, except the fries. No, the fries were bad. Meow meow! Merci. <laughs> 
che il gatto randaggio vuole le patatine <ride> chilling in Essaouira, enjoying the wind and the sun, we set back off on the road. And our next destination was not a city. We didn't have any more cities planned for that day. Our plan was to finally get to see the sunset and get to see it on the coast, sun setting on the Atlantic Ocean, which should be pretty special. It promised to be very special because the coast of Morocco in that part of the country looks a lot like the Pacific coast of California actually reminded us a lot of it of course it's even wilder and more rural lots of argan trees and not so inhabited very beautiful we thoroughly enjoyed the drive it was sunny the whole time but it wasn't too hot no. it's really pleasant and we finally were able to make it to the cliffs that we had picked near El Walidia, if I remember correctly. Walidia. Yeah, and they are these gorgeous, amazing cliffs. And there we were able to see the sunset, which was great. Hello! We made it for once to <laughs> our place for the night where we have a sunset. I mean, we came before sunset to a few camp spots in the past week, but it was either cloudy or there was too much sand in the air and you couldn't really see the sunset. But today we're gonna see the, the sunset, the actual sun. Adventurous Julia wants to go for a swim. Mm. Looks like the waves are a little bit too big. Wow, crazy. Okay, now you might see how small Julia is compared to the waves. To put that in scale. And the waves are still a bit far away. They're huge. It's insane. Why is Julia wearing a swimsuit? <laughs> Bellissimo! È proprio bello! A 
after taking a very nice swim in the ocean. That was one of my goals for the trip and I did it. We set off again. For that day, we actually had planned two cities. We decided not to go to Marrakesh. We didn't have time. It wouldn't have done it justice. And, and probably Ramadan is not the right time to visit cities in Morocco anyway, because many things are closed. You cannot really do that. have that many experiences that you would like, you know, interact with locals and so on. The only thing that's left is still a few people like assaulting you because you're a tourist and they can get money from you. We already had that experience in Fes and a few other places, so we definitely didn't want to repeat it in, in Marrakesh, that's why I skipped it. Yeah, and so we went to Casablanca. Yeah. How was Casablanca? Well, would not skip it, but not, not visit during, during Ramadan. No. So we spent just half a day in Casablanca and then we quickly left. And that's why we also have basically no footage of Casablanca. The only nice thing that we saw was the mosque. Everything was closed. Yeah, and on top of that horrible traffic in Casablanca, people really cannot drive. While all over Morocco, we were surprised by how good people drive, how much they respect the rules and just how pleasant it is to drive, much, much better than in Italy, for example. <laughs> yes. I'd rather drive in Morocco than in Italy. Except? Except in Casablanca. Then we made it to the Rabat area later that afternoon. The others went into Rabat, but we were too tired. And we decided to wait it out in a very nice camp spot and then join the others for dinner. Yeah. Rabat instead pleasantly surprised us. Yeah, we had a good dinner at a nice restaurant, had a walk on the market, many people around. All many, locals. Many locals, only locals actually, no tourists. And that was a nice experience. That was actually what we were missing the whole trip. So we really enjoyed that. Yeah, that felt like a glimpse of the culture and an experience of how Moroccan culture is. So we, we have a very nice memory of Rabat. Hello, uh, we're on our way to Tanger. That's our last stop before the ferry tonight. So our vacation in Morocco today comes to an end. It's been an amazing time here in the country. It's, it, it's so intense. I barely can't find the words now to describe how I feel. It's been really intense. It's been beautiful. Lots of learning, lots of experience. Definitely will remember it forever. Uh, very beautiful. We made it to Tanger. We had a few hours before we had to get to our ferry and we spent them in Tanger, uh, walking across the market, across the streets and there were also there a lot of people around. Despite the fact that it was Ramadan, you could really tell it was a crossroads city and so many cultures meeting at the same time. There was a huge souk lots of people around we drove through it and then we walked through it we even were able to buy souvenirs for the first time and last time in the trip and that was really nice yeah really loved tanja and then finally it was time to make our way to the port so yeah the trip was really nearing to a close so here we are again back at the port in tanja med ferry leaves in two hours and it should take one and a half hours to Go back to Spain. I think we will be there maybe around 11 until we can actually drive off the ferry. The three cars are here. Uh, they all made it so far and I hope that they will make it also back home. And yeah, it's been great. Just waiting. We will cook some dinner while we're waiting and then we go. We don't have much time left. The folklore is caduto solo only at the end of the trip. <laughs> and we're in Spain. Here we are. We're in the port of Algeciras. 
the ferry ride was pretty smooth it went by quite quickly i'd say and now it's 11 30 11 40 almost pm though our clock still says 10 40. then we just had uh, two to three days to drive those roughly two and a half thousand kilometers back to germany yeah maybe the only highlight of those two thousand kilometers was andorra <laughs> yeah we had a quick stop or a quick detour actually because it was not, not so quick it was not long <laughs> enough so we made it even longer with a detour to andorra we both of us uh wanted to see it we've never been there before <laughs> and yeah i mean pretty and beautiful mountains but we were a bit tired so yeah and and you know after every trip there's so much you need to process there's your eyes and your brain are so full of images and impressions and feelings it's always very tiring especially the way we've traveled so far the pace is not very relaxed for sure and we made five episodes out of a two-week trip because there was so much to tell that's also why we now want to go on this big trip, which we've mentioned in our first video, and that's gonna be the main content of this YouTube channel. It is because we wanna slow down the pace. All in all, Morocco was great. It was a fun experience. It was also our first real trip where we tried to film it and document it for YouTube. We learned a lot. We filmed all the footage, so both video and audio, in Morocco before even adding, editing our very first video ever. So we had no video editing skills no. and we learned much, much more afterwards. And we hope you liked this, these videos, this series on Morocco. The purpose of it for us was to start and learn something so that when we will leave in a few weeks to South America, then we will already know what to do. Yeah, give us feedback, comments, like, subscribe, obviously. <laughs> The Morocco series is over and yeah, stay tuned for the next video. It's gonna be a surprise. But more adventure. Yes! See you! You can find all of our Morocco series in this playlist. Be sure not to miss our current preparation for the South America trip either. Subscribe to follow along on this adventure.